<laughs> First of all, I, I really would like to thank the organizers for uh, their kind invitation. In fact, I, I was supposed to come here in 2021, but then uh, <coughs> we, we couldn't travel, and I'm very happy to be here uh, now. So, um, I am pleased to um, report on some uh, results that we obtained in collaboration with uh, uh, Juan Davila and Manuel Delpino uh, from, from Bath and uh, Srish Parmesh War. Uh, he was in Bath and now he is in, in Warwick. And this is about uh, a special configuration of vortex, uh, vortex spheres traveling in, in opposite direction and, um, and their uh, precise uh, description or asymptotics uh, as time goes to infinity. This is for the uh, Euler equation dimension two. So um, let me just uh, recall it here. It is written in terms of uh, vorticity. The vorticity is called the uh, omega and uh, it is transported uh, through the gradient pair of uh, a function, a scalar function psi, the string function uh, that is related uh, to the uh, vorticity via the inverse uh, Laplacian. So you, you select as psi uh, the, the convolution with the fundamental solution. In, in R3 for the reflection. And um, so, this is just briefly, uh, uh, psi will be the, the stream function, omega the vorticity. Uh, here, gradient pep is written in this way, and we can recover through the Biosphere law the, uh, the velocity of, uh, of your fluid. Um, so this is the, the problem I am interested in. And um, concerning uh, existence, uh, uniqueness, regularity, we, we have uh, results, classical results from Judovich theory, um, Volibner, uh, et cetera. Let me, let me start just with a, uh, with a remark, a very simple remark, uh, which is uh, the following. So assume uh, you are interested in steady states, namely a uh, solution not dependent on time, so WT is zero. A, a way to produce these uh, steady states uh, is uh, simply solving your preferred semi-linear elliptic equation. If you have a, a psi that solves minus Laplacian of psi equals your f of psi, <coughs> and then you define the vorticity to be the right -hand side of the equation, then the pair uh, psi and omega uh, <coughs> is a stationary solution for the, uh, to the Euler equation. And in particular, uh, let me introduce this object here that has many names. It's called Kaufman Schooley Rosenhead Vortex. Uh, for people like me coming from the, the world of elliptic PDE, this was a solution of the Liouville equation. So uh, if you consider this, this pair W0 and Psi0, uh, uh, this is a solution, <coughs> a steady state for Euler, uh, and solves uh, this, this semi-linear elliptic equation here, so where your nonlinearity f uh, is the exponential of psi zero called this, this equation is called the mm -hmm. equation it appears in many other contexts like differential geometry you see this when you prove the uniformization theorem uh, you see this object when you study blow up finite time infinite time blow up in keller siegel so this is a very nice uh, function. It's positive, readily symmetric, uh, monotone decreasing, and it decreases fast, like one over 
rho to the power four. So this is uh, W zero and psi zero, and then it's a pair of steady state. state. And then you can scale those function. Uh, you call W epsilon, uh, W zero, center as a point psi, psi is a point in R2, and you scale it by epsilon, and the right scale is here to put one over epsilon square in front, and you scale the stream function psi epsilon, and you get uh, for any epsilon um, and any uh, k, say mass if you wish, uh, number, uh, you get another uh, steady state. And this steady state has the property thanks to the fact that omega zero, W zero, sorry, is decaying fast. Um, it has this very sharp uh, shape. So uh, as epsilon goes to zero, uh, the vorticity is almost like zero outside the point psi where it is centered. And it is very much concentrated high, if you want, uh, around side. So this is a solution, a steady state with very uh, concentrated vortices. In fact, if you take the limit as epsilon goes to zero, uh, this function converge to a multiple, eight pi is the mass of this object uh, of a director. So, so you may ask uh, whether you can uh, analyze or discuss a solution with a vorticity uh, concentrated not just in one point, but in several points. And um, a natural or a simple way to imagine this is just to take one solution concentrated, like the one described before, and um, um, so, so you take those profiles, you center at different points, and you add them together. You, you, you do a superposition of this, of this object. But uh, a superposition of this object uh, doesn't give you a steady state. It was proved by Liouville, you cannot get a steady state like that. But you can assume that the point, the center where this vorticity is concentrated, are allowed to move in time. So it's not anymore a steady state. So if you if you allow these points to evolve in time, to depend on time, so you call this psi j, it's a xi j of time, t, and uh, you take uh, this uh, superposition of uh, concentrated vorticity and the corresponding uh, same function, and you put them inside the <coughs> equation, it's convenient, just, this is just cosmetics, to multiply the equation by epsilon to power four, and you do some more or less computation, uh, you get this expression here. Uh, so it's a sum of, uh, of, of expression inside the parentheses times the gradient of W zero. And if you want, uh, if you want that this is a solution, or maybe it's a good approximation, say, um, at least when you are around a point psi j, you want these parentheses here, these many parentheses here that are exactly capital and parentheses here. You want this to be equal to zero. So what you get is the well uh, known uh, Kirchhoff root uh, uh, system. Hamiltonian system for the points. If you want a concentrated solution, like the one I described before, at least that it is almost like a solution, you better have that the points satisfy this uh, Hamiltonian system. Now the story and the results of uh, the analysis of solution to the Euler equation in vorticity concentrated goes back to the very first work of uh, Helmholtz, Kirchhoff, Ruth, etc. So in conclusion, if you have a solution of this uh, system, kappa, 
uh, then then you may be so the the function I introduced before at least is a good approximation of uh, your other equation. So one problem that um, was considered uh, in in the eighties, maybe nineties, is uh, this one the the singularization problem, namely. Uh, assume you have you are given an interval of time zero capital T along which you have a solution psi T of the system kappa and in and in this interval of time zero capital T uh, there is no collision of these points. Uh, is it possible to find um, a regular solution? Omega epsilon uh, to the Euler equation in string vorticity form, so that uh, uh, in the limit as epsilon goes to zero, this uh, vorticity mm. is really concentrated where it's concentrated along uh, near these points that are moving with, uh, with following the Kirchhoff root and the Kirchhoff. Uh, Hamiltonian system. The answer to this problem is yes. It has been <coughs> proved by Marchior and Pulvirenti. And a more specific uh, question uh, that we asked, uh, that we posed ourselves, was well, we, we, I described before um, an approximate solution, right? Um, can we construct a, a, a true solution close to the one I described before? And this is uh, the, the result we obtained in 2020, also with Jim Cheng Wei, in which uh, we, we said that yes, we can in fact, um, uh, if you consider an interval of time, zero capital T, uh, on which you don't have collision, then you can, in fact, uh, uh, prove that uh, close to the approximate <laughs> superposition of very sharply concentrated kaufmann schooly uh, vortices, you have a solution. And it's close in the sense that the reminder this phi epsilon can be smaller and can be uh, controlled. It can be controlled, but with a coefficient that, in fact, depend on t, you cannot push t too far. It's constant here, it degenerates when t goes to, to infinity. All right, as I mentioned to you before, uh, there was a previous result by Marchior and Pulirenti in 1993. Uh, in which they address the question of the singularization of uh, vortices. They, their proof is different. They start uh, with uh, a certain initial condition, concentrated, and then, that, then they let the flow go. They follow the characteristic, the characteristics, and they were able to, 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 to solve the, the problem and get information about the localization of the uh, vorticity. Our proof is different. And um, I will discuss uh, this proof or uh, in, 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 the, in the result, the type of proof in the result I am going to, uh, to discuss uh, now. Um, and uh, let me just mention that, say, we, we use this method also recently to prove uh, again, with, with way, uh, the existence of leapfrogging of vortex ring for the 3D Euler equation, uh, which can be uh, stated in terms of uh, axisymmetric with no swirl. So somehow it's a, it's a form of 2D uh, Euler equation with uh, curvature term, if you wish. All right. But we learn. From, from the book of Marchior and Pulvirenti, that in reality, a collision almost never occur. Namely, the set of initial condition of your 
Hamiltonian system for the point psi, so that uh, you have collision in finite time, this has mentioned zero. So it is collapses a very exceptional event. <coughs> so the point is, what can we say about the long time asymptotics of, for instance, the <coughs> um, uh, the solution I, I discussed before uh, in, in this previous uh, theorem. Uh, well, not much in general. So in a very <laughs> generic situation like the one I said before, I don't know, not much. And maybe this is, uh, this question can be related to uh, the question of, the question of uh, stability of vortices. So even if in the case um, uh, in which you start with a, a W0, uh, radially symmetric monotone decreasing uh, solution that you perturb with um, something small, phi zero, phi, uh, x zero. So the question is, uh, the, so the solution omega can be written as this W0, this readily symmetric, monotone decreasing function plus a phi. If phi is, is, is time zero is small, can we say that phi the whole time is small, remains small? So this is, uh, in general, an open question. Besides the result of uh, Arnold uh, about L2 orbital stability. Let me mention uh, the result by uh, Bedrosian, Potizelati, and Vicol, where they consider exactly this situation. Well, they don't cover exactly uh, this, the Kaufman school vortex. They need faster decay at infinity, and they proved linear stability in L2. Uh, UNESCO and Shi in, in 2022, uh, they, they consider the case in which the, vor the vorticity is like a Dirac delta centered at a point P, which moves in time, P of T, perturbed by something with uh, compact support uh, in such a way that the point P never goes inside the support of the perturbation. And if this is uh, remain true in all time, then they prove nonlinear asymptotic stability. And these results in which they prove implicit dumping, dumping goes back to the result of Pedrosian and Masmudi uh, about uh, asymptotic stability of shear flow goes to the planar coax flow. So the, the topic today is this picture. Uh, so it's a, it's a very specific configuration, already well known if you wish. But uh, the point is to uh, give a, a, a very a precise description of the, not of the dynamics of the points, which is known, but of the solutions. So, in this first picture, I, you see a vortex pair. Uh, this is a solution to the Euler 2D with a vorticity. And, uh, it's a function which is odd in the X2 variable. And it is a traveling wave. Namely, it, it travels to the right, say, in the X1 direction with a constant uh, speed. So you can... You can, you can write the equation in terms of, you can solve the equation in terms of an elliptic, semi-linear elliptic equation. Okay. And, uh, and, and what I would like to discuss in, <coughs> more precisely is uh, when you put together two vortex pairs, uh, this, this is a plus and then a minus, and the two vortex pair, one traveling to the right and one traveling to the left. So this is, uh, I copied this. 
So well, this, but this is a work experience. So uh, let me start with vortex fair. Just two 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 points. Uh, moving um, with one here and one there. Here with a plus and here with a minus. So if you uh, if you call, well, this, this uh, configuration is symmetric. So we just consider psi one, which is one here, is odd in X2. Uh, psi one uh, as two component, P and Q. And we put a, a positive mass here and a negative mass there. And we introduce this answer. We put this answer in the Kirchhoff root system for the points. And what we learned is that uh, then the first component of, so let me start with the second component of say one uh, satisfies uh, Q dot equal to zero. So it's constant in time, let me call it Q zero. And the first component P is, uh, is go goes to the right. It's a P zero, doesn't matter. Uh, and it goes to the right with a certain speed, and the speed is uh, 2, 2k uh, divided by q0. It goes with that speed to the right. So a vortex fair, uh, it's a solution to the Euler, but it is a traveling wave solution. So it, it can be written as omega of x is uh, omega 0 of x1 minus ct, comma x2, the same for psi. And if you take this and you put it inside the equation, you get that the equation becomes gradient perf of psi zero minus cx2 dot gradient of w0 coupled with the uh, elliptic equation minus Laplace of psi zero equal to omega zero. So exactly as in the case of Euler 2D, you can use this, uh, the trick, a, a way to produce a vortex pair is to solve a semi-linear elliptic equation of this form. So you have, you have somehow a shift here, uh, but it is a semi-linear elliptic equation, okay? So what is the F here? Well, you can choose your F, but in reality, what happens is that I'm not sure if there is an ex a theorem that uh, says what I'm going to say, but for a vortex pair, like the one we want to describe, uh, you cannot have vorticity without uh, compact support. So for a vortex pair, you need vorticity with compact support. So the choice, uh, of I, I, mean, I, I have a question here. I, I, I need to go back. I mean, I, I thought here you are talking about point vortices. So now when, okay, so here it's point vortices. This is point, this now, is key. Now what you are doing next is you are to decircularize, right? So here you are not really thinking about. Now I want. Thinking about uh, solution close. Correct. But here you didn't, you didn't put an epsilon. That's um, That's right. I'll put the epsilon. Okay. I'll put the epsilon. <coughs> but, but this is, yeah. But here you are really thinking about something close to the... Close to the point. To, to so the, the epsilon point. will appear here in the F, in the vorticity. Uh, but let me just mention about the F. So the Schooley, the Schooley, Kaufman Schooley. The Kaufman Schooley doesn't have support, compact support. It goes like one over row to the four, goes fast, but doesn't have compact support. And here we need compact support. <coughs> so our choice for F, it is another, uh, say, nonlinearity that uh, is another semi-linear elliptic equation that is well known somehow. So let me fix um, a power, a little gamma. Uh, it is enough to take it bigger than one, but let me take it bigger than three. 
and consider the unique readily symmetric solution to this uh, problem here with the, on the unitary ball with a zero boundary condition. So it's a nice profile, radially symmetric and positive. And let's consider the function capital gamma of X. You take this solution here, V uh, in the ball, and then outside the ball, uh, you define it as uh, multiple W prime of one times the log of X. So what is this gamma? This gamma is, say, the unique among solution with finite mass uh, solution to this semi-linear elliptic equation. Let me just focus on, on this. Uh, look, uh, if you are inside the ball, uh, gamma is V, uh, so this is a solution. If you are outside the ball, uh, V prime is negative, so gamma plus, uh, so the positive part of this is, is zero. And in fact, uh, outside the ball, gamma is a log, it's, it's harmonic. So you get this gamma, and you call two phi m whatever the mass. Now, if you have this uh, solution for any epsilon, you can scale the, the gamma epsilon and uh, you can uh, define omega epsilon as minus Laplacian of gamma epsilon. And you get here uh, something that uh, has uh, epsilon to minus two in front times uh, gamma epsilon to power uh, gamma. What is this? This is the vorticity, right? It's, um, it's very high at size uh, epsilon to minus two, and, uh, and it has a compact support. And the support of this omega epsilon is in a ball center at zero and of radius epsilon. What is, ga what is capital gamma, gamma plus? Uh, this one? No, no, gamma, gamma plus, yeah, that one. Ah, the positive part of? And capital gamma, gamma is what? Uh, this is the positive part of gamma no, no. to power. Ah, to the power gamma. To the power little okay. gamma. Sorry. Sorry. Too many gammas here? <laughs> <laughs> it does not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, because usually the, the power is P, but P is the point, so it's a mess. Uh, but so it's, uh, it's this function here was the part to the power gamma. And little gamma is bigger than three. It's a power, it's a number. Okay. So you get uh, this, this semi-linear elliptic equation. Uh, here, uh, you scale, you get a vorticity, if you wish, uh, very concentrated with the support inside a small ball. Uh, the vorticity is concentrated in the sense that uh, converge weakly in, in L2 to a Dirac delta with a multiple, uh, 8 pi k, whatever, the mass, okay? So this is our new Kaufman school, if you wish, okay? It's our new building block for the construction. And, uh, and we know all the things required on this equation because uh, I will mention it to you later, the main, the main point of, of, the, of this solution. Uh, I'll, I'll describe that to you uh, later. So it is just one question. What about the regulator of this formula epsilon? Oh, yeah. So, it's not the same thing. No, it's not. So, so it, the, the vorticity, if you, if you wish, the vorticity depends on gamma. Now, here, you, we can choose F. Right? Um, so the vorticity is C gamma, comma, so yeah. Regular. Yeah, that's right. Because it, it goes, but then, yeah. So the biggest the gamma, the more regular, yeah. Is there any way to limit C infinity or? Okay. 
So then, uh, can, can, can I ask a question again? Like, because earlier you said you wanted something to be uh, compactly supported. Yeah, I don't really know why, but um, okay. What I have in mind is the following: if you take, you, you are looking for vortex pair, right? So if you if you look at the limit as t goes to infinity, and your object is not. It doesn't have compact support. Compact support. In the limit, you see a front. So you see something what, depending only on one dimension, one direction. And so you don't have conservation of energy, of which energy becomes infinity. So, but but the state. Yeah, but, but, but the gamma you are, uh, what you are taking here is not compact support. Oh, no, gamma no, but the vorticity, yes. Because because the vorticity is this thing gamma plus the, the little gamma, and uh, this is negative. So the it's all okay. and, and then you and you and then you scale, and you get a small support <coughs> and a big uh, vorticity. As a follow up for this discussion, maybe you don't have the answer. Suppose I would like to keep gamma an even number. Then I don't have anything to worry about gamma to the gamma or v to the gamma. It makes sense even if it's negative. And this allows gamma to be oscillatory. Oh. And maybe I will have some new phenomenon or something new, etc. This is maybe for later. I'm just basically, maybe if you focus on the little gamma to be an even number, or you don't need to worry about solutions of the first elliptic equation. But let me take a gamma bigger than three. I understand. But four, <laughs> but four is an even number and bigger than three. Yeah, so. that's, that's a, yeah, we will need a bigger than 19. Let me take 20. 20, very good. Yeah. Is that it's, even a, it's even a prime number, 20. That's good. <laughs> is there any reason for not taking V uh, solving U V equation? Oh yeah, the as I mentioned before, uh, the Liouville uh, uh, e to the uh, uh, you get a, a vorticity like the one described before, the Huff, uh, Scully, Hoffman Scully, this one doesn't have compact support. So this is the reason. This is the reason. You could, uh, you could. You have the freedom to choose this f. You could take this, multiply by a cutoff, but yeah. All right. So, so this is the f, and 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 so you you, you expect a vortex pair to look like uh, uh, in terms of string function. This is scaled uh, gamma epsilon. Uh, now here I am taking uh, p to be zero, but uh, centered, if you want, at this point, uh, minus gamma centered at, at this other point. And the vorticity will be uh, epsilon to minus two times uh, a certain function depending on epsilon and of this variable which has this form. So it's like uh, the vorticity, the nonlinearity I described before, uh, centered at here, multiplied by a cutoff. And so you have to be, this cutoff uh, depends on a fixed number M, but we, we are expecting a support of size epsilon. Okay. And here there is a correction. Uh, the psi is a log. Uh, there is a correction that makes you to have that the vorticity on each one of these block is like the <coughs> vorticity of one thing plus smaller objects, epsilon squared. So a vortex pair looks like, uh, may look like, in stream for the stream function, the sum of this uh, gamma epsilon centered at these two points with different sides, plus and minus. 
So in fact, uh, this is a theorem. It's a list of it's, um, there is a list of people here that prove uh, this statement. Uh, so if you are given a Q, a number Q, uh, for any epsilon, uh, you can find the speed C, which is not really m divided by two Q, like in the case of the Hamiltonian system. But if you want to construct this solution, uh, the speed uh, is modified by a, a term of size epsilon squared. And uh, you can find a stream function psi, uh, psi q epsilon, this is a psi q epsilon, which looks like uh, the, the sum of the gamma up and down plus a rest of size epsilon squared. They solve this equation and you have, uh, well, a control on this reminder there, okay? Not only, also the dependence on, on Q of this reminding, reminder terms. And this, this result has been, has been known for a while, in particular, uh, Smets and Van Schaftingen, uh, in fact, proved uh, using variational method this uh, result exactly with the nonlinearity I explained to you before. Uh, we also gave a contribution because we need it uh, for our construction, which is exactly this estimate here, the Q of CQ epsilon and the Q of psi Q epsilon. Uh, this is our very little contribution in this line. Uh, all right, so this is a vortex pair. What happens to the two vortex pair traveling in opposite direction? This is the picture we have in mind. So first I go to the Kirchhoff route, the Hamiltonian system. So here we have four points. The points are located like uh, plus, minus, minus, plus. They are uh, odd in, with respect to x1 and with respect to x2. So we just care about uh, how this moves. And uh, if, you, if you take these answers and you put it in the Kirchhoff root uh, system of ODE, um, you get um, a system of ODE for, for P and Q, the first and the second component of Psi 1. Uh, and it satisfies uh, P, P dot is, is equal to F of Q P and Q dot is minus F of P Q with uh, F given by this. In here, you see the interaction. You see the interaction of this one with the one below. And you see the interaction of this one with the one that goes mm -hmm. in the other direction, okay? And you can solve. You can solve in particular, you can say the following. Uh, take uh, Q infinity and uh, an initial P naught, I don't know. Then the solution looks like uh, this. So uh, the second component, uh, Q naught, uh, goes to Q infinity, given Q infinity. Um, as t goes to infinity with this speed is a q naught plus one over x squared. On the other hand, you are traveling. The first component, uh, uh, p naught, goes uh, with this speed exactly as if it was one single uh, vortex pair, but uh, with this other object, uh, which decays like one over TST goes to infinity. This, this, uh, this analysis is well known. Uh, we did it again, but Sackman did it in 1995. But in reality, uh, we learned that a vortex pair uh, has a speed, which is not only m divided by q infinity, it has a um, correction of size epsilon square. And for us, it is very important to take this correction into account. Why? 
Because otherwise, when we want to construct uh, the solution, uh, we would see the interaction of these two uh, pair, vortex pair, uh, which is uh, something small of size epsilon square, but doesn't decay in time. So what we needed was to consider um, a modified uh, point vortex system that takes into account this epsilon square. So we did that. Right, and we were lucky because uh, we solved it uh, linearizing around the P0 naught and Q0 naught, and the linearized operator is a good, nice uh, structure. This B matrix uh, has this form here. So you have a T here and a T to power minus three there. So when you want to solve, uh, you, you in, in the first component, you integrate from from zero to t, but in the second component, you can integrate thanks to these from t to infinity. And so the solution of this modified point vortex system is like um, uh, the old one. You recognize, uh, you recognize here the uh, speed, but with the epsilon square correction. And then uh, something that goes like one over t, and in the second component, you have an asymptote at Q infinity, and uh, you approach Q infinity like one over T squared. So, sorry, uh, what's the difference between the, the, this one and the previous one? The, okay, L let me focus on this expression here. Yeah. You have epsilon square here. Yeah, I mean, the, the speed is not the same. Ah, the speed is not the same. The speed, uh, the speed here was. Yeah. Yeah. But the speed here is is corrected. We we needed to correct it with epsilon square because okay, the point system has a speed m divided by q infinity, whatever. But if you want to construct a solution, even in the case of a single pair, the speed of the solution. Uh, is this constant plus an epsilon <clears throat> square. So there are two objects. There is the system of the point, the Hamiltonian system, and then there is the solution to the Euler equation with concentrated vorticity, okay? If you consider the system of the points, you don't have epsilon. Sure. But if you consider a, a vortex pair, like in this case, solution of the Euler with concentrated vorticity and the epsilon is the size of the concentration, then the spin is modified by epsilon. Sure, can't you argue about um, the initial, initial position? Sorry? Can't you argue using the initial position? The initial position? Yeah, because Q infinity is, uh, this is- yeah. yeah, but the, the initial position, I don't know. Uh, you need to modify the speed. Yeah, do, do you need the epsilon to, to modify the speed? Right, you need the a, speed depends on the initial condition, right? Yeah. The final speed. The final speed uh, depends on the f if you want on yeah on the final position. Of, so the the picture for just one pair is like uh, for one pair is you go this way, right? This is a plus and this is a minus. So. So you, this is your Q infinity, if you wish. I don't know if this is just for the point. Okay. <coughs> All right. So uh, okay. So so if you, if I want to 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 build this uh, uh, now solution of the Euler traveling in different uh, direction, uh, I definitely want to simply add up two vortex pairs. Okay. One that goes to the right and one that goes to the left. So in terms of uh, uh, string function, I take psi r, r to the right, minus psi l, l to the left, where psi r is the string function of the right vortex pair, 
And the psi L is the spin function of the left vortex pair. And I simply add them up together. They don't give me a solution, but maybe it's, it's a good start. And also the vorticity, you, you do the same, okay? So every, every time I see R, I am looking at the right, L, I am looking at the left, and I am just adding up what I learned before on a vortex pair. Okay. In particular, so the the support of uh, so the vorticity uh, is called epsilon two minus two times u r minus u l, and uh, the support of u r is uh, around a ball of size epsilon uh, around here union a ball of uh, size epsilon. On the other point. Okay. So the result is is, uh, is as follows. Um, if uh, I am given a, a Q infinity and uh, a T zero such that uh, a P zero at T zero is greater or equal than ten Q infinity, I want to start in such a way that the two vortex pair are separated. Then for all epsilon, we can find a PQ function defined from T infinity, from T zero to infinity in R2 that are small perturbation of P naught and Q naught, the ones I described before. Uh, P converts to P naught like one over T, uh, with a size in terms of epsilon, epsilon cube. And uh, the second component that converts to Q0 with a speed one over T square and size epsilon cube. So, okay, so th there exists this pair P and Q and a solution to uh, the Euler equation that has this form. So the vorticity is the sum of the vorticity of two vortex pair plus a reminder that has this form epsilon to minus two phi epsilon and the string function also and what do we do about uh, phi epsilon well uh, first of all uh, this omega epsilon the vorticity is odd in x1 and uh, odd in x2 this phi epsilon is continuous and uh, uh, the phi epsilon is small uh, if I just look at it uh, in the first quadrant, it is uh, small in, in terms of epsilon and it decays as t goes to infinity. The support of this phi epsilon remain close for all time uh, around these points that move and with, uh, say, a support of size Epsilon. And uh, on, on phi epsilon, you have control in L2. And uh, on the psi, on the stream function, you have a uniform control uh, by something that is small in epsilon and the case in time. So this is to say the, the, the vortex pair is for uh, two vortex traveling in opposite direction for all time, they are lo localized. Let me do a uh, few remarks. So uh, this solution is not new. Uh, it was discuss discussed by Iftine, Sideris, and Gambling. I mean, you start with this, you let the Euler equation flow, and you get uh, there is a solution for all time, okay? Uh, so what Iftimia, Sideris, and Gambli did in the late 90s was to say, well, the support grows as, uh, at a rate of t when t goes to infinity, which is okay. It's consistent with ours. These points are moving with the speed ct. So the support, in fact, grows like capital O of t. But our result is telling us that in reality, the support remains very much concentrated 
around the points. Um, there are other uh, configuration in which we, we, we think our construction can be uh, performed, in, in particular this sparsity result in 2020, in which they, he considered uh, three points. Uh, it's a self-similar uh, configuration, and these three points, they are uh, expanding. And let me mention a very recent result by Yasainia uh, Midi and Masmoudi, where they consider leapfrogging, if you want, of vortex pair in patches. Okay, I would like to spend the rest of my time in this talk uh, discussing the, the proof. So the proof has two, uh, three steps. We uh, construct a good approximate solution. Then we solve the problem on, a, if, and on a, an interval of time, finite interval of time, T0 capital P. Okay? Uh, and this part here uh, somehow is, uh, is related to what we did for the point vortex. But in this case, we have a very precise control on the solution. So we can pass as t goes to infinity. And let me explain uh, why. So uh, this is the, the problem. We have uh, the transport part, I call it E1, and the elliptic part, I call it E2. Now, as I mentioned to you before, T0 is chosen in such a way that the support of the right uh, vortex pair and the left vortex pair are disjoint. This, is, this simplifies a lot because if you take the sum of these two vortex pair and you put it inside the transport part of the equation, you get a, an error, the first error, which decomposes in a right error plus a left error. Okay? So let me describe the right error, the right, uh, the error to the right, ER10. It's convenient to describe this in terms of the variable y. The center of y is here. OK? So um, the, the equation, the <coughs> one as the t omega plus the quadratic term, the, the, the quadratic part. And if you plug everything inside, you get uh, these first two terms that comes from omega t. And then you have this quadratic term here. So what you do is add and subtract this term here, minus c, uh, minus epsilon c one gradient of u uh, r. And you manipulate this expression. You take a gradient pair of psi r dot gradient of u r. And you get this blue part, which is zero, because, uh, because you are starting with a solution. This is the vortex pair to the right. So this is zero, because you start with a solution. So what you are left with is this gradient pair of psi L dot the gradient of UR. This is the interaction of the vortex pair to the right with the vortex pair to the left. Plus another term, this iii, in which you collect uh, uh, what is left. And in particular, these terms is due to the fact that in reality, um, uh, our, we are not solving a traveling wave equation. All right, but this is the error. It has two terms, i and iii. And the error can be written in a certain form, can be written as the gradient pair of psi r minus c epsilon y2 times the gradient of a certain expression. And this certain expression <laughs> as, is uh, as the form epsilon squared divided by t squared by uh, times g2, and g2 as Fourier modes in the variable zeta. Zeta is the variable center now at this point, if you do the Fourier uh, decomposition 
of G2 with in zeta to get only mode two on. The support uh, of this G2 and of G this G is contained uh, here, localized there. Uh, and an analogous uh, uh, description also for the left. Okay. So how do we improve our approximation? We introduce two set of functions. These set of functions are, they want to, to take, uh, we want to consider the pair as a whole. We, we cannot consider the pair as the sum of two bumps, okay? Uh, so this is the reason of, uh, so this is the picture. And uh, we look for an approximation of this form. So for the vorticity, we take the all the vorticity and we add a function which has the form epsilon to minus two times a correction to the right and a correction to the left. And these are functions that are expressed in the variable y. Y as a center here. And the string function psi uh, has this form. So once you have a phi r, you define psi r as the inverse Laplacian. And your psi is given by the old psi zero plus this psi r and psi l multiplied by a cutoff and a correction that is called psi out. Okay. <laughs> So if you take this and you put it inside the equation, you get that the transfer part of the Euler equation, E1 multiplied by epsilon to power four, uh, decomposes in two, in two pieces, ER star and e, uh, L star. Let me just focus on ER star. ER star is, uh, well, you have the time evolution, uh, it's epsilon squared because you multiply it by epsilon to power four. Then you have these three terms which are linear in phi r and psi r. You have the error. You have another linear term here in phi r, but multiplied by something that is small. Here you have a gradient term of psi l. So Psi L is traveling on the opposite direction. So this is small when you look it at around here. <coughs> there is a quadratic term and there is the interaction with the Psi out, okay? So uh, let me focus on this linear operator here. This linear operator here uh, as a nice form, can be written in a nice form. Okay, so uh, this L as gradient perf of psi r, then you have this gradient perf of little psi r, etc. We first put together the first and the third term. If you put together the first and the third term, you get this. And then you have the interaction with gradient perf of psi r dot gradient of ur. Then you use the fact that uh, um, uh, that you are is um, um, f epsilon of psi r minus c epsilon y two, and you can uh, write uh, the whole expression in this uh, in this form here. Here you use some algebraic manipulation and really the form of. Uh, the uh, object that you have. But let, let, let us uh, look at the form of this linearized operator. It's gradient perp of psi r minus c epsilon y2 dot the gradient of something. <coughs> so this is the operator, the, the error. And you can see that the linearized operator has the same form as the error. This was the error we found before. So it has the gradient perp of psi r minus c epsilon y2, also here, dot the gradient, and here is the linearized operator around the, your profile equals to the error. So you can, you can improve just, just solving inside 
Okay, just solving gray, Laplacian of psi r plus epsilon prime psi r equals to the right hand side. And why you can do it? Well, you can you can solve uh, because um, you have information on the linearized operator of the semi-linear elliptic equation we started with. This operator uh, as a kernel, uh, you can translate uh, the solution and you get uh, another solution. So it has a kernel, but um, if you ask orthogonality condition on the right hand side, you can solve And In particular, G2 doesn't have mode, mode one. So you can really solve. You can really solve and you can improve. Okay, I'm sorry, I am running out of time. So we, we, can, find, we can move the points uh, and get uh, to an error, which is of size epsilon to power five. And, uh, and then we solve uh, on the interval T zero to capital T. Uh, let me just read this slide. So we can solve on the interval T zero capital T, the two equation, asking for the vorticity to vanish at capital T. We have control on the support of the vorticity and we have control on the size of the vorticity in terms of smallness in epsilon and decay in time. This is uh, crucial for the final argument uh, in which we are able to take the limit as t goes to, to infinity. Uh, and using Ascoli Arzela, we prove the yeah, so. Thank you.